in general, the overarching observation is, um, you know, we're, we're likely to experience a wave of housing instability and homelessness in the coming months. And there are a handful of things that we can do to get out in front of that wave to prevent it or lessen its impact. Um, the things that we can do are really um, guided by, will be guided by being mindful to a couple of critical gaps and critical opportunities um, in the housing sector for us right now. So the first gap is that, um, is an economic one, obviously. We have um, what is likely to be prolonged needs and really short-term relief or short-term aid, right? Um, PPP, the UI plus up, um, temporary shelters that have been erected like um, the post facility out at Kehi Lagoon. Um, these have a short-term duration and while federal assistance may be extended, our recovery in Hawaii is likely to be longer um, than the rest of the country and may outlast the availability of federal aid. Right now, that aid is, is um, expected to accept to expire end of July, and we'd expect housing distress to surge at about that same time. Second big gap is um, support for renters. So in April, we saw a 10 to 15 percent increase in the number of people who missed rent and we're expecting a much bigger number in May. Um, uh, federally backed homeowners, uh, homeowners with federally backed mortgages have mortgage forbearance for up to a year, but there's no relief for renters aside from um, the current 60 day uh, moratorium um, on evictions. And that still means that back rent is owed and lump sum payments when the moratorium is lifted could result in, in evictions. Um, so that's a second gap. Um, and then a third gap is that um, there are more folks becoming homeless even now um, who do not qualify for existing homeless assistance programs. So um, you folks just mentioned the early release from incarceration, that's one factor. The decrowding of shelters is another factor. And with, uh, of course, economic distress is a third major factor. And there's just fewer options even for couch surfing right now during the pandemic. And unfortunately, most of our existing homeless um, programs target people who are chronically homeless. And um, that means folks who have been on the street for a year or more, um, or who have experienced multiple bouts of homelessness within the past year. So our supports are misaligned with the folks that are showing up on the street right now. Um, there are a couple of windows of opportunity that we can pay attention to and make use of. The first is um, the, the soft rental housing and real estate market means um, that there's a prime opportunity actually um, to get uh, local folks who are in unhoused or unstably housed into housing and to do it on favorable terms. Um, as, a, as one example, landlords are often reluctant to rent to low income um, voucher holders, Section 8 voucher holders but those vouchers now represent a reliable source of rental income and therefore are attractive to landowners. So there's an opportunity there. Second opportunity is federal funds that are coming into Hawaii under the CARES Act, primarily through FEMA and HUD, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, can be used to fund rental assistance, housing placement services, and new housing development. And how we use those funds now is gonna determine, uh, will help determine whether we can forestall or prevent some of the impacts of a housing um, a surge in housing need. And then the third opportunity or asset is there's a lot of community initiative and resources at work right now that we, and when I say we, I mean um, government uh, and the private sector should be looking to encourage and leverage. Um, the HCF Resilience Fund is one example, but there's also a lot of community-based and neighborhood-based efforts to either create housing or to expand housing options for folks in their areas. In the, in the briefing paper that I shared, I, I laid out um, eight ideas, action steps um, to get out in front of this curve, tapping those, um, those assets and those, and those gaps. But I'm just gonna share three in general and then I'll take questions. Um, one is speaking to this opportunity to get local people who are currently unhoused or unstably housed into housing, investing um, even modest funds into beefing up the staff at existing nonprofit agencies staff that focus on housing counseling and placement positions would do a lot to help us take advantage of that opportunity and get voucher holders into housing, which is not normally as accessible as it is right now. Um, 
nonprofits, including homeless services providers, typically have um, housing counselors or housing specialists, but they're understaffed and they're insufficiently staffed um, for the opportunity that we're presented with at the moment. Um, a second potential action opportunity or area of focus is rent relief. And um, this is, I think, better done as um, flexible loans rather than grants. The, the handful of rent relief grant programs that launched in the last week or two were all oversubscribed within the first 24 hours. And funds are limited, of course. Um, and so structuring them as forgivable, no or low interest loans um, with, um, again, no, no fees um, and with flexible terms can stretch those dollars further. But the other reason to structure them as loans rather than grants is um, people's ability to repay is gonna be changing over time. So right now, um, many people have a surplus of cash because they got their stimulus check, they have the UI plus up, and pairing a rent relief, a flexible rent relief loan with some financial education and counseling, along with some assistance to negotiate with landlords will take us a lot further, I think, than trying to distribute rent relief grants. Um, and as a side note, there's also a need to get property manage managers together with government and community and hammer out some uniform guidance for how to, re how to structure rent repayment plans for renters. Um, and then the third action opportunity is really to use the emergency funds um, from FEMA and HUD to address those two points, but also to um, develop um, permanent affordable housing. And um, uh, rather than invest those monies in, only in emergency solutions like the post facilities out at Kalailoa, I mean, out at uh, Kehi Lagoon, uh, we can follow models um, like at Kalailoa, Waimanalo, and Wainai for building um, very affordably constructed um, communal living facilities and other low cost sustainable housing. These projects all were started under the governor's emergency proclamation on homelessness. So there would need to be some mechanism for flexibility in building. But the great thing about using those emergency funds to invest in those kinds of projects versus just temporary fixes is number one, of course, they're permanent. But number two, those projects are rallying a lot of community energy and support in the form of in-kind donations, uh, donated materials and labor and so again, producing permanent housing at much lower cost um, than would typically be experienced. So in general, uh, the point is, um, you know, it's, it's time and necessary right now to broaden our view from immediate, immediate emergency relief in the area of housing and start paying equal attention to prevention and posterity. That's all, thank you, speaker. Thanks. Do you have any questions or comments for James? I will be posting the report as well on the website. Any questions? This is, you know, I think this is, an, um, you know, renter relief is an important topic for us uh, to take up because it's something that we need to address from the front end. Because as we all know, if you don't have a renter who's not be able to pay rent, then it's going to, it's going to, uh, go down the line, then you're going to have a unit owner who's going to have a problem there. And then you're going to have a lender who's going to be stuck in this. And then you're going to have a mortgage servicer who's going to be involved. I mean, it just goes down, down the line. So this is something that we need to address um, from the front end. And we should look at the opportunity we have now with FEMA funds to try to take a step forward on this. So um, we'll be appointing uh, a subcommittee to try to develop some proposals 